In this video, we're going to look at importing the SignSpace package into Unity and setting up to publish a simple region. The rest of this set of videos is going to go through the process of building and publishing a complete multiplayer first-person shooter with its own marketplace for selling in-game items, a series of public battle arenas, and a load of customization and map building features for end users so your players can create thousands of hours of unique content using your work. The first-person shooter components we show are part of the editor pack we're about to install. And they're also maintained separately by the developers who created them on this GitHub. You can use them as they are and add your own art. You can extend from them for a unique project of your own. You can contribute to our public server games or you can build a standalone project with them. You can also take all the principles you see in this set of videos for setting up playable components, and you can use those to build your own games in a similar, modular, customizable way. In this video, we're going to walk through the basics of getting your account set up and the SignSpace editor pack installed in Unity. So first of all, you need to download our editor pack from the Unity Asset Store. It's free and it has everything you need in one Unity package. As of recording this video, we support Unity versions 17.2 through to 18.3. When you download the asset and install it, the Unity Asset Store should automatically select the right one for the version you're running. If you have multiple versions of Unity installed and you want a specific version of the SignSpace Editor Pack, you can go to our wiki, uh, the link is below, to select the one that you want. We strongly recommend installing the SignSpace Editor Pack in a new project. We want to avoid any potential conflicts with other scripts and we do override some Unity settings such as the graphics and quality settings and the input manager and the tags and layers. Clashes can occur, particularly in packages which install their own version of Unity's post-processing stack. Uh, we do provide these with our project too, to ensure you're using the same version that we use. So to be safe, I'm going to start with a new project. There's a lot of kit installing from this single package, hundreds of components that you can use for your project, and a load of publishing tools. So it'll take a few minutes to install. Once it's installed, you'll see the science-based menu in the top bar and this welcome panel. There are just two bits of admin to go through first. I need to click the Install the Editor Pack Settings button. You can see there's a button here on the welcome panel. This is a one-time thing. Or you can go to the science-based menu here in the top and choose Install Editor Pack Settings. These are some of the quality settings that could override uh, the settings on an existing project. Now you need to sign in. Click here or use the menu sign in function. You see a panel on the right hand side where you can log in with your SignSpace account. This means your content that you upload will be in your inventory or your project or your store in World. If you have not already created an account, go to sign.space and sign up. Once you have an end user account, you also need to accept the developer terms of service. Once you have logged in, you will see your key here. That's it. Now you're ready to publish content. So let's upload a basic sandbox region just to see how it works. Instead of going to File New Scene, I go to File New SignSpace Scene. This scene is very similar to a regular Unity scene, and you could build this manually from the components in the project, but there are a set of components here that you want to use in every scene you upload. First, there's a landmark. This determines where your users will land. If you add lots, they will spawn randomly around the, the map. For each landmark, you have a radius, and users will spawn randomly within that area. You can set it to zero and fix their location precisely, but that does mean users will land on top of each other if they all log in at once. The green arrow indicates what direction they'll be facing when they land. Right away, I can press play and test this in single player mode before even uploading anything. It loads our UI and pulls an avatar down from the server. 
We don't have 100% of the platform running in the editor. Things like the room editing tools are in the viewer only, and uh, some of the components like uh, the browser component and video surfaces don't work uh, in the preview in the editor. But 95% of the features do, so it's great to be able to build and test in real time before you publish. Obviously, this is just a single player environment. Next, I have a room floor component. This means that the scene that I upload can be edited by the owner of the room in world. Editing means they can move around content within the scene and they can spawn furniture items. If you want to build a region with parceled land allowing different users to build in different areas, you can add multiple floors and there's a whole load of extended functionality on this component that supports that kind of you know, uh, social community building. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it as it is with one floor uh, for, this, for this demo. I have a post-FX volume component here. This is a prefab in the project. You can edit and upload your own as part of the scene or even as separate spawnable items. But remember, when you duplicate the prefab in the project, you need to drill down and duplicate the underlying post profile that it is linked to as well. And finally, I have this Scene Export Settings component. This is how you publish your scene. It's basically a form that you fill in. I'm just going to do the minimum required to get a sandbox up and have a look at it in World. So I need to pick a category. It's a region and I'll say it's a classroom for argument's sake. Just makes it discoverable in World. Uh, on the Details tab, I'm required to give it a name I'll call it demo scene, um, I think it's the 8th today, 0802. I'm going to just copy this content into the description as well. So I've got something in there, put a brand name in. Uh, I could make it for sale, uh, but I'm going to mark it not for sale. We'll do a separate tutorial about the marketplace and how to do full productization. Um, icons as well is really for when you're putting something in the store and other people are going to have it in their inventory. I'm not going to be doing that with this uh, uh, with this item. The author, I need to just put my uh, name in here and uh, mark myself for the copyright as well. And uh, now I'm ready to upload the, the, the scene. I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, content in here as well uh, so that we can see that there is some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of asset being uploaded. So I'll just put a few objects in here as though this was a project that I had built. And uh, now I can come back here and go to the upload panel and I'm ready to publish it. I do that quite simply by clicking the automatic submission button. Now we package everything in the scene, including all its dependencies and any scripts attached, and we send it as a single zipped file to our servers. Our processing servers then do concurrent builds for PC, Mac, Linux, Oculus Rift, Vive, Android and WebGL. We're sorting out iOS now and we'll add more VR devices shortly. That's it. I can log in with my account to the curator.sign.space website and see the item is processing. I'll get an email when it's done. When it's done, the status here will show staging. Now I can log in and so can anyone else I give access to. When you first upload a scene, it goes to the preview servers. That is developer access only and the regions will be private by default. There's no economy on the preview servers either. To log into the preview servers, download the SignSpace viewer Enter your username and password. And when you log in, tick Preview. When you want to go to the live servers, restart the viewer, untick Preview and log in again. When you log in, you won't arrive in the scene you've uploaded. You need to click on the Home button, scroll down. Uh, you probably won't have uploaded as many scenes as I have uh, recently, uh, but scroll down to find the latest scene that you've uploaded. You'll see it here, Demo Scene 0802, that's the one I just uploaded, and I'm going to click Enter. You can see there's no splash image for it because I didn't add one, but here's the content that I uploaded, and I've arrived where I thought I was going to. I can share this with my friends or let other developers come in 
At the moment it's approved only, uh, but I can set it to public or friends only. But remember, this is only on the preview server, so only other developers will be able to get in here. Once you're happy with the region, you can click Send to Review. The region will be checked by our review team and then approved to the live servers. You'll notice that in the Virtual Goods component, I didn't add any images or icons for this region. That's fine for pushing it to the staging servers, but if you push something to the live public servers, you will need to add an image for the loading page and images for the store and inventory. Please note that once you have successfully uploaded a minimum amount of content and pushed it to the live server, you can get certified very easily and then you can publish to the live servers without us reviewing your work. We review new developers to help with quality control, to give feedback and support, and to put up a barrier that weeds out any bad actors uploading malicious or pirated content. But anyone responsible should expect to be able to get certified to publish to live quite easily. Of course, if someone is certified and then they go off the rails, they'll get kicked out of the castle again and have to go through review. OK, well that's the basics for setting up a project and publishing your first region. You'll notice on the virtual goods form here, there is a server ID. Zero is our public server. If you take a white label server of your own for your first standalone project, you just put your server ID in here and upload to that. We've only scratched the surface of the region settings in this video. Check out our masterclass channels for lots of cool ideas about how to create and publish amazing content, and our wiki has lots more details on how the region settings work and how you can access things like our region management API for sharding and access control, authentication, and so on. Also remember, you can upload a region you make and sell it as a map or private room template that other customers can use. We will have a video in this series on the marketplace and how it works in relation to the Unity Asset Store and how you can cash out and manage sales and so on. But in the next video, we're going to look at how to upload inventory items that can be spawned in the region. With that housekeeping out of the way, we'll then be able to move on to the really exciting stuff, configuring and publishing some interactive game components like placeable enemy spawners and weapons.